How badly can you miss a clear night sky? Let me show you. A few days ago, I put my equipment outside to photograph an object in deep space. A cloud of interstellar gas resembling the shape of a heart. Hence its name the heart nebula. Join me in that night and experience that our own backyards can be windows to the universe. I know that the Heart Nebula is not a new target. I've shot it, I think, twice before in these two years that I've done astro imaging. And looking around, I really want to use the new Technosky refractor. So I flipped around the solarium and found the Heart Nebula is a pretty good fit. It feels so good to be back out under the stars again. The telescope is fully set up, the cables are connected. In the last imaging session, I think it was two and a, one and a half months ago, I tried to go after the Triangulum Galaxy M33, I think it is. I wanted to use the Optolong L Pro filter which I got, but I forgot to insert it and I shot the entire night without it, which was awful. No time to talk, let's cool the camera and choose the Hut Nebula, let's go. There are lots of different types of objects out there. For us amateur photographers, galaxies, nebulae and star clusters are most suitable. This object is a nebula, a cloud of hydrogen gas, glowing in its distinctive red hue. Nebulae are the most common types of objects out there, coming in all different sizes and brightnesses. That's why some of them are easier to photograph than others. The hard nebula is not one of the bright ones. Finding it in the night sky will not be that easy. If you use a DSLR, you will have to take some test shots to frame up the target nicely. If you use the star alignment on your mount, make it precise, to be sure to have the nebula in frame. I orient myself on three stars. They resemble the shape of an upside down V and resemble the center of the heart nebula. Maybe cross check with Stellarium to make sure that the nebula is in frame. And after that, you can shoot your long exposures. Regarding these exposures, I recommend at least 3 minute subs with the DSLR. The ISO can be anything between 800 and 1600. And regarding the filter, a basic light pollution filter will be great, but going maybe narrowband or multi-narrowband is even better, because light pollution is getting worse and worse every day. Enough prep talk, let's get out there and shoot this nebula. It's so noisy out here, it's so annoying. Here we are on APT, I already started to cool the camera. Let's connect PHD. Technosky refractor, this is the correct profile, connect. And these stars should be way out of focus. Well, it's quite good actually. I want to go to the hard nebula. As always, when I shoot my deep sky targets, I always enter a custom object. Hard Nebula with custom coordinates because I really want to frame up this target as I like it. 2 hours, 32 minutes and 04 and the declination is 61, 45, 45. Minus 105 degrees the angle. Alright. The scope position is about Polaris right now. And one thing I also did different compared to the last night, I, I took the rig, the telescope and the guide scope out two hours before I start imaging and filming right now. Just to give them time to cool down, which hopefully will make the focus, the loss in focus, less drastic over the night. The reason I'm going for the half nebula before focusing, I want to get the correct angle on the camera because I have to touch the camera and if I have to do that after focusing, the focus will be off again. There are some really inexpensive tools, which are very small. 
but they have such a great impact in this hobby. It's crazy. And one of these tools is the Bad Love Mask. And a red dot finder, which is very handy, really. Five minute light frames on the hot nebula, let's go. Temperature is at minus 20. I cool it down much slower. The meridian flip will happen at 34 minutes after midnight. Guiding is running. Did I forget anything? Did I prepare everything the filter has in there? I need to get the dew heater bands because I suppose it's doing tonight. And let's go. Now here's one of my favorite things to do. I just played solved this image again to show it to you in Solarium. And you can see the heart and everything in the background. There's the fish head down here, the center, and it's leaning towards the right. I think this image will be if I get enough images in quite great. I hope so at least. I will click on show so that Solarium shows this position. It looks great. And now let's show it to you in the actual night sky. The hot nebula is sandwiched between calf. Oh, that's not calf. That's Sejin, Sejin, I don't know how it's pronounced. This is Miram, and I cannot make this constellation out in my skies. But I know where to look. Almost where to look. Let's go to the DSLR. Seeing a laptop screen with a mostly green image is maybe not the best representation of this hobby. Being out there under a clear night sky is an experience a video just cannot replicate. Or can it? Inspired by other filmmakers in astrophotography, I will try to add and improve scenes like this one. Look at this view on Cassiopeia. There's the W going around. I, I'm amazed that this can work in a live view of the camera. My filming camera is a Canon 60 Mark II. The next lens I want to get is the Samyang 50mm 1.4. With that I hope that I can view constellations and stars in live view while I do this hobby in the foreground. Having the stars twinkle in the background and showing these constellations will definitely, or hopefully, share a better experience of this hobby. Let me show you what I mean. You can see Mirach right there, right there. We'll need to work with the tripod. Ah. Alright, the Hutton Nebula should be... There is Sejin. And now the Hutton Nebula should be in the center of this frame. I have now taken the image of the night sky with the DSLR and the zoom lens. This is the unedited image. It's still in the night and I'm still outside recording this. It's very cold. I need to get inside soon. You can see in the top right the famous double cluster of stars. And I've looked around in this image uh, a few seconds and I found the half nebula. Of course we cannot see any nebulosity in here. But I will zoom in and the first thing that stuck out to me was this chain of stars right there. Right there in the center of the image right now the chain of stars. We were able to see this when slewing to the Hutt Nebula. And here is this triplet of stars. That's the center of the Hutt Nebula. It's so sad that it's not visible in an image like this. The light pollution really has taken over. I live in a bottle 5 and it's getting worse from day to day. But we are able to see all of these things in the sky. With this equipment that I have, I, I still consider it to be amateur equipment, but that we are able to take images from light polluted backyards, from our own backyards, from a uni in the universe like this, is still amazing to me. Alright, I will now ch finally check if the focus is good and then I will go inside and warm up. As for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, stay tuned for the hard nebula at the end of this video. And may the night be with us.